Again, this is proving to be tougher than I thought. I remember reading a book where it was advised that the best way to learn about who a person really is, is to look at their bank statements and to open their cupboards. I got chills when I read that, and it's always kind of haunted me. I'm proud of my bank statements, but my closet. <laughs> now that's a different story. I wish I could say I'm not sentimental, but I have items of clothing still from when I was 16 and I'm 30 now. Ooh, I've kept bridesmaid dresses and heels that I know I will never find an excuse to wear again. But I seem to keep them with the small hope of this lavish occasion turning up where at that very moment, I'll be so proud that I held on to this item of clothing for so long instead of donating it. Talking about donations, I know how fortunate I am to have enough. Well, more than enough actually. I don't want this to come across like I'm ungrateful for what I have. And in terms in terms of the real problems in the world, having a messy wardrobe is such a first world issue. I'm simply trying to take stock of where I am and pass on what is an excess and what would find a better home somewhere else. I've picked up a few things that have helped me approach <laughs> this task of decluttering my wardrobe and as I go through them I hope that you will find value in them as well. Change isn't a bad thing. I've built up so many memories in life. And I've realized that holding onto the past could turn me into one of those people who tend to live in the good old days. What helped me approach the process of decluttering and organizing my closet was the hope of embracing the future, being aware of the past, but not rooted in it. Before I even look at what I have or may want to separate from, I allow myself to take a sneak peek into the world of what my closet could be. I love a good old Canva mood board and a deep dive into the world of Pinterest. By creating a space where I got excited about visualizing my ideal wardrobe, I allowed myself to create somewhat of a virtual finish line. Knowing what I'm working towards is a motivating factor while being knee deep in the journey where giving up may become a tempting option. I don't get too hung up on the details because what I have or may want to get may not be exactly like what I see in the pictures or on mood boards. However, this broad-based goal-setting activity springboards me into actioning the first step. For me, the first step in the decluttering process is saying goodbye to the past. This means picking out all the items of clothing that are unlikely to have a home in the future. This could be because they're too fancy, I can't fit in them anymore, or they're just impractical in some other way. For example, I have these heels. I cannot walk in them. They are not comfortable at all. The only reason I have them and have held onto them for so long is because I love how they sparkle. <laughs> I start the decluttering process by combining the Marie Kondo method of being grateful and thankful for the clothes for serving me. And I combine this with a moment of stillness where I allow myself to revisit the good memories attached with the item of clothing. Now I wore this dress <laughs> the first time I took my husband on a date. Colors are so happy, it just has so many beautiful memories, but I think it has shrunk in the wash a little. <laughs> Like Alice falling into Wonderland, I pop back into the highlight reel of what the item of clothing represented either at the time where I purchased them or at the event in which I wore the item. Sometimes I enjoy purchasing the item far more than I ever enjoyed wearing the item out because shopping can sometimes be fun. More fun than events sometimes. <laughs> Saying goodbye is not fun or easy but I find moving into the future is a lot simpler when you're traveling light. Ooh, my hair's a little bit greasy, but that's because I've just come back from a run. I'm doing a challenge this month where I'm trying to run 5Ks every day for the entire 30 days. Well, there's 31 days <laughs> in this month, but I'm trying to run 5Ks for 30 days and I'm gonna be posting that video in the new year. So hopefully that goes well, but that should explain the hair. <laughs> Anyway, the next thing I do, I jump back into the cupboard and box the items that are out of season. In this case, I'll be pulling out winter clothing and keeping what I know I wore this winter and donating what I didn't wear. These items are usually chunky items, so if I didn't wear them for a year, I would rather pass them on to somebody who would wear them. 
after I have made peace with letting go of items that are unlikely to serve my future, I play a little bit of a game. I have lived out of a suitcase many times in life and I've learned that smart packing can allow for great adventures. I've also learned the hard way of packing too much and discarding clothes because I couldn't carry the weight of them. That's exactly where I go next. I pull out the pieces of clothing that I'd carry on my back for 10 days if I were to live my current life from a bag. It's even a fun activity to pack them into a travel bag so that they are separated from the rest. These items are usually my go-to items, even if I have duplicates or versions that are similar. If I were to pack them in my bag, then I'd keep them. These items are often the clothes that fit well, are super comfortable, or that can go with the large variety of other items of clothing. Now that I have my feel-good clothing to the side, I know that I am ready for the final step in the decluttering process. The haul. This is the step where I follow the Marie Kondo principles almost to a T. I move all my items of leftover clothing onto my bed. I am able to see everything I own without having items hidden in some deep, dark part of my closet. I now filter through the last portion of my wardrobe by keeping items that spark joy and thanking other items for being part of my life before I move them to the side. Sometimes an item may spark joy, but it's not a good idea to keep because it doesn't fit well. This shirt gives away all of my secrets. <laughs> if I'm sweating, this will be the first one to let people know. <laughs> this is often an uncomfortable moment, but I try my best to work through it and remember my end goal. Again, this is proving to be tougher than I thought. Also, if I'm debating over keeping something because I may have joy in it one day, Example is I might fit into it one day. Then I thank it and move it to the side because I'm sorting for present me, stepping into the future, not future me dealing with what's going on now. That's far too many realities to deal with. Let's talk about organizing. Now that I know what I'm keeping, I organize them back into my wardrobe. There are a few ways of doing this, but I personally enjoy organizing by color. I wake up knowing what vibe I want for the day. And mostly, I like to feel like I'm wearing a uniform. However, there are days when I want to feel girly or strong and maybe sometimes even glamorous. I like to have all my clothes sorted by color as that makes reaching for my look a lot easier. This is often also the point where I revisit the mood board or Pinterest board and pull on ideas from what jumped out as efficient or aesthetic. So when it comes to decluttering, I try not to find too much of my identity in what I wear. But having clothes that are comfortable and that fit well, well it does contribute towards my mood going into the day. I feel better when my cupboards are clean. I enjoy packing my clothes away and I enjoy the ease of knowing what I would like to wear and finding it easily. Finally, I appreciate having an abundance of clothing and I am mindful that there are others who do not. My heart is that the clothes that I separate with will find a home where the new owner will find as much joy in the item as I once did. So I'm very proud to say that I <laughs> reduced the amount of clothing in my cupboard by a ridiculous amount. I am gonna count how many pieces of clothing I donated, but I've got roughly just over 30 items of clothing in my cupboard. And that doesn't include my active wear and my shoes, but that's everything that you see on this side over here. And I'm really proud of that. I also managed to reduce my active wear from taking up two spaces over here. Now I've got the pants on this side and the shirt on this side. And then I've got all of my shorts for the season and my skirt. So overall, I'm very happy with the end result. It was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be, but I feel so much lighter now knowing that this is all that I own for the summer season, which is quite cool. I should also add that my husband asked me to keep three items of clothing and I will be putting these in his wardrobe <laughs> because he said that these dresses are very special and he'd like to take me on a date where I wear them. 
and so I think that's very sweet and, and I'm happy <laughs> to put these in his wardrobe if he wants to keep them. They don't really fit the vibe I'm going for and honestly I think I would only ever wear them on a date but I would also wear some of the other clothes I've got you on a date but seeing that these are pretty special and have quite a few memories attached to them I'm probably going to keep these but just not in my cupboard. <laughs> 